In this video, we're going to learn how to check if a number is prime or not using C++. So prime numbers are natural numbers greater than one, divisible only by one and the number itself. Where a number is divisible by another number if the remainder after division is zero. So for example, we could check if five is a prime number or not by dividing five by all the numbers between one and five not including one and five. So here we divide five by two, by three, and by four. And because all of these divisions result in remainders that are non-zero, this tells us five must be a prime number. We could check if six is a prime number or not using the same technique. So we can divide six by two, by three, by four, and by five. And because dividing six by two and by three results in remainders of zero, this tells us six is not a prime number. Now, when using this technique, we don't need to check the numbers beyond n divided by two, where n is the number that we're checking to see whether or not it's a prime number, because we know it's not possible for n to be divisible by these numbers. So for example, with six, six divided by two is three. We know it's not possible for six to be divisible by four and by five we know there's going to be some non-zero remainder. So we don't really need to check these numbers. Let's implement a solution in C++ now. Up here, we'll declare a function. The function is going to return a bool value, true if the number it's passed as an argument is prime and false otherwise. We'll call the function is prime, and the function is going to accept an int as an argument. So we'll have the parameter here, int n where n is the number that we're trying to check whether or not it's prime. So we'll copy this and supply a definition of the function down here. And the first thing we'll do is check if n is less than or equal to one, because if n is less than or equal to one, we know n is not prime by definition. So we're going to return false in this case. Next, we'll check the integers between one and n divided by two. We'll check to see if n is divisible by any of these integers. If it is, that tells us n is not prime. So we'll have here a loop with a counter variable i that we'll initialize to two. We'll have i go up to and including n divided by two. So we'll have i is less than or equal to n divided by two and we'll have i++. So we'll increment i by one with each loop iteration, so i goes over all the possible integers that n could be divisible by. Then we'll have here if n modulus i is equal to zero, then we're going to return false. So n modulus i is going to give us the remainder of n divided by i, where percent here is the modulus operator. If that remainder is zero, that tells us n is divisible by i. In that case, we know n is not a prime number, so we're going to return false. Now, if n is not divisible by any of these integers, that tells us n is a prime number. So if this loop never causes the function to return false, this means n was not divisible by any of these numbers. So if we actually do reach this code here, we're going to return true, which means n is a prime number. We could now test this function out. So up here, we'll call is prime, and we'll pass is prime seven. Now, if the function returns true, we'll output that seven is a prime number. So off here, if is prime seven, C out, and then seven is prime, followed by an end line. So if we save compile and run the program, we'll get here seven is prime, which is correct, because seven is a prime number. Now we could trace what happens in this function when n is equal to seven. So when n is equal to seven, n is not less than or equal to one, so we're not going to return false. In this loop, i is initially going to be two, and n is going to be seven. So n divided by two is going to be seven divided by two. That's going to result in three, 
because this is integer division. So instead of 3.5, we get three. Then we'll check to see if n modulus i is equal to zero. In other words, is the remainder of seven divided by two, zero. So seven divided by two is three remainder one. Now, because the remainder is not zero, we're not going to return false. Instead, i is going to be incremented and we'll now have i is equal to three. So three is still less than or equal to n divided by two, which is three. So we'll again check here if n divided by i results in a remainder of zero. Now seven divided by three is going to give us two remainder one. And again, the remainder is not zero. So we're not going to return false. I is going to be incremented again, and I will now be four. I is no longer less than or equal to n divided by two, because four is greater than three. So this loop is done. Then we'll return true, which is correct, because seven is a prime number. Now we could call this function with all the integers between let's say one and 20. We'll make a loop here with a counter variable j that's going to go from one up until and including 20 by one. So j is going to go from one to 20 by one and each time in this loop body, we'll call is prime. We'll have here if is prime j is true, then we'll output that j is a prime number. So we'll have c out and j and then is a prime number followed by an end line. If the function returns false in the else case, we'll output that j is not a prime number. So we'll have c out j is not a prime number followed by an end line. So if we save compile and run the program, we'll get here that 19 is a prime number. We'll get that nine is not a prime number and we're getting all the correct results. Now two and three are a bit special. So in the case of two and three, both of those are prime numbers. But if we look at our function, the way it's going to work is that if n is two, then n divided by two is going to be two divided by two, which is going to be one. Now i begins at two. This means this condition is never going to be true and we'll never enter the loop body. Instead, we're just going to return true. In the case of n being equal to three, we'll have three divided by two is equal to one. And again, we'll never actually enter the loop body. We'll just return true. But that's okay because two and three are prime numbers. So the function does produce the correct results. So this is how we can check if a number is prime or not using C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.